Welcome back to another clay video. Today we are going to create the secret boss battle from Cuphead the Delicious Last Course. Okay, so this whole battle is floating in the air, which is not entirely uncommon in video games, but in reality, floating islands is something that's a little bit tricky to create. So with the help of this shadow box, we will be creating this secret boss battle. Inside of this frame, we have this thick piece of plastic, which I think I will use later on for the platform. I was actually able to find the original artwork in different pieces, and I can place this together and start printing it for the background of our frame. I printed this on top of some sticker paper, so it makes it really easy to attach onto the frame. However, the paper isn't as big as this frame, so I need to just kind of splice it together. It doesn't look perfect, but it looks a lot better than an empty space. Now let's break out some foil and start creating the main floating platform. Not only is foil good to save on clay, but if you're making something floating like this and you're depending on wires to hold it in place, it's a very good idea to make sure it's nice and lightweight. This looks like a pretty good size, so let's cover it in some green clay. The tricky thing about using foil is making sure the clay is nice and smooth on top of it. As you can see, it's very lumpy, but in this case, it kind of works out for this stage, and also, you're not really going to be able to see it since all of these fingers will be covering it. I actually never noticed until I was creating this that there's a pair of hands holding up this island, which is the hands of the devil that you see in the background. I didn't mix enough of this purple clay, so I'm going to cheat and just cover the little edge of this junk clay and hopefully you won't be able to see the bottom of it. Let's add some nice pointy fingernails on top of the fingers. Aluminum wire can be nice to work with, but it is very flexible. So in order to make it stronger, I'm going to double coil it. I learned this trick in the early stages of my channel when I was really into making stop motion characters, and this is a very common way to make the armature wire much stronger. Knock out! Let's get a hole into the back of the island, and then we can attach it onto the background. In case you're wondering, no, super glue was not enough to hold this in place. I ended up using some hot glue in the back of the fingers, and this ended up working pretty well. It's a bit messy and it's still very wobbly, but I think ultimately it should stay in place forever. Remember that plastic I said I was going to use? It's a little bit too thick to cut, so we're not going to use that. Instead, we're going to use this plastic from some packaging I saved a while ago. I put down the painting mat because you couldn't even see it on the table, but I guess it really doesn't matter because you can't see it here either. Now this took a few different tries before I figured out something that actually worked. I thought maybe kind of painting these swirls would look good. It does not, so let's try to just completely cover it up in green. That also didn't work and looks really ugly, so let's move on to plan C. I thought by using this resin dye and letting it sit in there for a few hours, it would dye the plastic green. However, it didn't exactly work. It looked good at first when I took it out, but after drying it off, it just kind of turned transparent again. Remember that plastic I said I was going to use, and then I said I wasn't going to use? Well now we're going to use it. But we're going to be using it not as the platform itself, but as a little holder for our resin. I've only used resin a few times. It has its uses, but just not really for the types of things I make. But I guess it's good I had this bottle sitting around for the last two years because now I actually need it. Here at Carabix, we believe in a low budget setup. We don't need these fancy purple lights to dry our resin. We believe in the power of nature. Basically, you can dry out your resin in the sun instead of letting it sit under a purple light. And if I had a purple light, you wouldn't have seen my cats. That was Clover and Kelvin. They were begging me to be in this video because it's been a little while since they've been on camera. Let me know in the comments, do you want to see more Clover and Kelvin in these videos? Or maybe even the new kitten, Mooney.
Even if you tell me you don't want to see them, they're probably going to be in the videos. Since our transparent platform actually worked this time, let's start creating some little clouds that will work as sort of a fog on top of the platform. Using some super glue, which I found out does not attach to resin very well, we can attach all of these clouds in sort of a spiral pattern. I think that looks pretty good, so let's get that glued into place. We need to make a small hole here for the floating cloud, and this is held up by a lightning bolt, so let's use a yellow paint marker and color the wire yellow. This platform is where we're going to have our character stand, and we've already created Cuphead and Miss Chalice in other videos, so let's create Mugman. I'm doing this in the same way as the other characters, I'm just baking it in multiple different parts to avoid using wires, and it just all together makes it so much easier. And also, just like the other two characters, I'm going to be doing the classic shooting position. At this point, hands are becoming second nature, and instead of dreading this step, it just kind of becomes another easy step that I have to do. Which is really nice, because for a long time I avoided characters with hands, and this definitely limited me. So now I feel pretty confident in creating any type of character. This is going to be the straw on top of Mugman's head. Let's dent in this area a little bit, and then we can make a hole for the straw and place that into it. As we finish up the face, I want to make a small, I guess, announcement or update. It's going to be a little while where I'm still doing the every other week videos. When I do it this way, I'm just able to put so much more detail and care into the videos, and I don't feel like I'm rushed to get the video out each week. I'm assuming with this schedule I'll start to get pretty far ahead and then get back to weekly videos, but I want to keep creating the best videos I can, and that just takes a lot of time. Now on to part 2. I'm calling this part 2 because I'm not sure if you can notice, but the video quality drastically changes at this point. My only job is YouTube, so thanks to all of you watching my videos, I was able to upgrade my filming and lighting equipment. I know it's kind of customary at this point to thank your subscribers for watching your videos, but I really am grateful that this can be my full-time job. So thank you again to all of you for making this a reality. Let's move back into the clay creating. It looks like we're creating a licorice monster. This is going to be the devil. This boss battle is a little bit hard to explain, so I'm going to use a video on screen to help me. Basically, each time you turn, the bosses change sides. So to dodge a lot of the attacks, you have to be facing one way, and then turn back, and you have to really be thinking ahead, and this just isn't really something I'm good at. So I still have yet to beat this boss, but since I just made it with clay, I feel I'm kind of obligated to beat it. We want this devil to be very angry looking, and I think these eyes really help to sell that. This is going to be the ears, they are sort of double layered, the inner part is tan, so this is my method for creating that. They ended up being kind of like tiny little goblin ears, but the side you'll see is the bigger ear. Now we need some horns on top of the head. And let's add in some little markings. After we get the head in place, we can move on to the hands and the wings. The hands are created pretty much the same as Cuphead, but we have a more sinister hand position. Individual teeth and claws is something that I just dread every time. They're so tiny and finicky and they always fall off, but it's one of those necessary evils you just kind of have to do. These are going to be the wins, which I don't think I've created wins since a few years ago when I made the Ender Dragon. 
However, I do love creating wins, they're so easy and they look so good. Let's use some super glue to attach all of these parts onto our boss. And now for the other side, we need to create the angel, which for the most part is exactly the same, so I'm skipping to where most of it is built. We have this toga that wraps around it, and the face is only minorly different. It still looks pretty creepy and evil, but it's essentially just a more happy version. I'm putting the hands together in sort of a praying for mercy kind of position, and then for the wings we have some nice puffy billowy clouds. And of course, a tiny little halo on top of the head. After we get everything glued into place, it is complete. So here it is, the secret boss battle from Cuphead, the delicious last course. I hope you all enjoyed the video. This was a very time consuming, but very rewarding creation. For the next few videos, I'm gonna stray away from Cuphead, but I will be back to creating Cuphead bosses in a few videos. If you wanna see the Cuphead themes I've created so far, you can click on the playlist at the end of the video. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.